This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are going to go through a list of very important perfumes. So uh, my top 10 tuberose based fragrances. I would like to say top 10 tuberose perfumes of all time, but it, it is my selection, so to each their own. Now, you know, the way I usually lately film my videos is live, so I do have um, my virtual live chat studio co-reviewer co audience with me to the side, the, the chats, hello everybody in the chat, by the way. Um, and uh, I am reviewing, I'm, I am making this particular video on St. Valentine's uh, weekend. Um, why? Uh, I mean, I, I love tuberose-based fragrances very, very much. And I've been, you know, toying with the idea of making my top 10 tuberose perfumes for a long time. But I thought, you know, St. Valentine's Day is the best time to actually really talk about tuberose because tuberose is about passion. It's about carnal desires. It's about love it's about um, innocence but also the loss of innocence it's about the flower that blooms in the middle of the night when passions are high so and it can be a perfume that has so many different facets now i'm going to show you here what a tuberose looks like um there are different you know this is a more artistic portrait of a tuberose if you may, uh, the flower in a very beautiful setting with a black background. Uh, but then if you want to see more of the flower, I can actually show you kind of more of a close up of how the tuberose flower looks like. And let me show you one more. This is kind of a, a very fragrant tuberose. There are different types of tuberoses. Uh, okay, and I can fade them out. So there are different types of tuberoses, but the tuberose itself is, is a night type of blooming flower and it's, it's smell, it's the most intense at night. And it's a subtle smell that keeps permeating through the, it's like it slithers like a snake slowly, you know, if you're sleeping in a house with open windows and you have uh, tuberose growing in the garden or whatever, it's, it's going to slither its way through the window and it's going to, the whole night, you will smell it. Delicately, but constantly. It's consistent. And, of course, you know, in, in ancient times, ladies were not allowed to even smell the flower of tuberose because, you know, it is said to immediately trigger orgasms. So it was believed in ancient times that young virgins would lose their virginity if they smelled the tuberose flower. Well, if you like this video thus far, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And you can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today and get extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decable Spell Together. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my members and patrons so much who have already pledged. Thank you guys very, very much. And thank you also to my co-chatters and reviewers who are live with me right now. So guys, uh, let me get ready for this because this is juicy. Okay. I've, you know, the tuberose fragrances that I've, that I've encountered in my life and that I love so much. And I, mind you, I adore tuberose. Funny enough, they portray a um, a journey, okay? A voyage of the olfactory experience of what a tuberose is, all of its, all of its facets. So the way that I've classified, the, and really it took me months, I've been thinking about this, I've been sitting on this one <laughs> for a long time. I will classify them from the least obvious tuberose to the most obvious tuberose. It's a journey. It's a journey of discovering a tuberose from, from its cavernous, more dark and resinous aspect 
to its more pure floral aspect. So, in fact, you have to envision this journey of these 10 tuberose-based fragrances as a journey of discovery towards the light. We begin with the dark and we end with the light. Because the tuberose, its highest smell is during the nighttime, and then as daytime approaches, it kind of closes itself again. So we're going to have night and then day, but of course we're going to have the opposite. While a tuberose is strongest at night, um, and it kind of closes itself during the daytime, we're going to envision it as night being a tuberose, a darker tuberose that is less floral, and daytime translated into perfume form is the more luminous tuberose. So let's get down to it. The first one, for my poison fans out there, uh, this is, and I have a really special treat for you guys when it comes to this. This is the first eau de toilette ever released, mind you. This is vintage because we do have the 30 Avenue, uh, Avenue Hoche um, address on it, and it has a very, very big lid because shortly after this one was released in eau de toilette form these um sprayers were reduced and made tighter and smaller and the caps as well so this is the first release i still have a couple of drops in this 100 ml bottle now this is a tuberose that is not obvious now, to many, this is the tuberose fragrance. To me, it's not. To me, this is an opoponox fragrance with plum. It is a plummy, opoponoxy, resinousy perfume. Very powdery, too, that kind of envelops the tuberose. And the tuberose is... You can envision this as a Dior Haute Couture show, like the one we've seen from Maria Grazia Curie for Spring Summer 21, depicting the tarot cards. The tuberose in Poison is wearing an haute couture dress, a purple, deep, resinousy, oh, heavenly, but heavily ornamentalized, an or ornamental beaded dress. So you can't really see the fragility of that little tiny flower because it's wearing this huge outfit, dark outfit, velvety outfit, with a lot of moiré, the original uh, box uh, packaging for Poison uh, delivered a very beautiful, beautiful green, poison green colored moiré fabric photographed. Uh, moiré is a type of working silk so that it looks like it has patterns of wood or water all over it. Uh, so envision this tuberose as almost being invisible inside this ginormous velvet moiré beaded pearly outfit that's covering it. So it is majestic. This is one of my favorite perfumes. You all know that. I have also made uh, many, many years ago a big review of my entire, not entire, but most uh, poison collection. And actually for the occasion here, just to, just to um, celebrate with you guys the return uh, of poison to, to my videos, um, here I have a tester bottle of the first release, Poison Esprit de Parfum, from the 80s. This is 100 ml. They never sold the 100 ml spray bottles. These were only produced as testers. So um, here is the 100 ml huge <laughs> tester bottle. Insane. I do prefer the Eau de Toilette, the vintage Eau de Toilette, to the Esprit de Parfum, but I love them both. I also have to show you, this is a gorgeous little piece, the Poison Perfumed Body Cream with, back then, 0.5% collagen. This is also from the Vintage range. This is how beautiful, got to cover my eyes for you to see, okay. This is how beautiful the bath and body range used to be, you guys. Glass with a very thick... This is not cheap. This is a very, very thick lid. Like, this is not hollow. This is fully plastic, you guys. This thing is like a whole centimeter thick. And it runs all the way through. It's heavy. 
it still smells inside, even though it's, it's it still smells divine. I mean, yeah, you guys, this just makes my heart flutter. The the poison, the bottles that were made for the entire poison perfume bath and body range are the best designed perfume bottles in history, in my humble opinion. To die for, Dior, shame on you for discontinuing them and for discontinuing this whole style. I also have something to show you. This is gorgeous also. Um, this is the Savon Précieux, the perfumed soap. It used to come also as a refillable, as a refill, but you could buy it in this luxurious tray. And there it is. This one is still sealed in my archives. This did not change color. This was always this kind of beigey yellow hue. Oh my God. I still have the original little uh, tissue paper that also smells heavenly. And then inside the tray is actually the little filter gidget that, you know, you put the wet soap on it and then the water runs through here so the soap stays dry. And then you kind of pour the water out. You guys, there. I mean, mm -mm, there's nothing like poison. The smell of the body range, let me just put everything back in its, in its place. This is the sticker underneath the perfume, uh, underneath the soap. I got to go down too, otherwise it's going to focus on my eyes. So yeah, this was the first one, and this is the dark tuberose, the hidden tuberose, if you may, dressed in haute couture. As the tuberose starts to slowly take the clothes off, we go to the second one, and the second one is, um, oh, by the way, just quickly back to Poison. Poison is uh, released in 1985, and... Um, or 1980, well, 1985 in France, and uh, Edouard Fléchier is the perfumer. The next one is from, uh, the next tuberose is a strange one. It's from 2008. It's also hidden, but it's not wearing an haute couture, heavy velvet, silk, and moiré outfit. No, this tuberose is slowly dressing down. It's revealing itself a bit more, because... Mm, this tuberose needs to walk through a garden. It's not just dressed to impress now. It's also, it's dressed for practical use. <laughs> it's a tuberose that is not completely naked. It's secret. You don't really, it, it's almost mimetized itself. It, um, it's wearing a trench coat and it's kind of hiding a little bit. It's going incognito through the garden and into the city. It's a secret tuberose. And that one is in Secret Obsession by Calvin Klein. Now, why do I say this is a secret tuberose? Because the nutmeg in here and um, the rose envelop it. Now, the um, Secret Obsession, who made the three, basically Anne Gottlieb, Callis Becker, and Givaudan perfumes, um, they co-created Secret Poison beautiful bottle by Calvin Klein and this one also has plum nutmeg and rose together they bond cr to create a trench coat around the tuberose so this tuberose isn't wearing anymore this heavy ornamental costume historical piece no it's toned down to a trench coat and it is beautiful, and it's a tuberose that allows these other ingredients to flutter. And that is a great, great characteristic of a tuberose, if a perfumer knows how to use the tuberose correctly, to give the tuberose that, to allow the tuberose to allow other ingredients to flutter. And that's exactly what happens in Secret Obsession, and that's why I love it so much. Moving on, the third one, is a tuberose that after a day out was in the trench coat, wearing the trench coat, then comes back home and it's time to eat something and then have a sweet dessert. So envision a tuberose that's covered with delicious vanilla, amber, 
but still has that smell of residue of makeup because the tuberose was out before. Remember, the tuberose was out and about in a trench coat, going through town incognito, shopping, doing stuff. We don't know what. Comes back home, still has smell of makeup, blush and makeup on the face and uh, is eating dessert. Vanilla and amber. And that tuberose, you guys, is in Classique by Jean-Paul Gaultier. In the Eau de Toilette in particular, uh, very, very beautiful um, tuberose in Classique. I mean, I look how much I use. I, Classique I use a lot. I use it a lot. And I enjoy it so much. It is such a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. If you can still find batches made in France of the Eau de Toilette, do that because I think they're discontinuing the production in France. They're just making them in Spain. Um, the smell is different. So try getting your hands on made in France bottles. It's a subtle tuberose because it's a tuberose that enjoys the sweetness of a vanilla, of amber, and of that typical to classique makeup smell of powdery makeup. It's divine. It's just so divine. But it's it's subtle. You see what I mean? We're still not in that realm where, like, you smell a perfume and you go, oh, tuberose. No, you got to know your tuberose to be able to smell it out in this one. But it's there, and it's a tuberose hiding underneath a sweet cloud. Mind you, Classique is not an overall sweet perfume, but the vanilla and the amber in here create an illusion of... Just like the color of the of the of the juice, you know, of this kind of peachy, pink, orangey boudoir type of scenario. Very, very velvety pink environment uh, where you know the tuberose is wearing. You know, tuberose took off the trench coat, and now the tuberose is wearing a Gautier guepierre, and the guepierre is what is uh, basically what the tuberose was wearing the whole time underneath the trench coat. That's what the classique tuberose is to me. Um, number four. Oh, by the way, classique, right, classique, um, 1993 was the release date of classique and um, Jacques Cavalier is the nose behind classique. The next fragrance is when tuberose starts becoming less of a human-made construct, you know, humans made the haute couture dress for the first one, humans made a trench coat for it, humans cooked the meal for it, the vanilla flavored stuff and the guepiem was made by humans. Now we're slowly transitioning, the tuberose is transitioning into a flower, into its true nature. We're slowly, the metamorphosis is happening. And number four is uh, also a 90s fragrance from 1994. Um, we got Jean Guichard as the nose behind this one. And this one, you guys. Eden by Cacharel. And it's vintage, beautiful glass bottle, marbled glass bottle. Now, this... Just like the name of the perfume says, Eden, the Garden of Eden. Now, after the human, the carnal, uh, well, carnal, we're gonna get, we're gonna get to more of that idea. But after this human aspect of dressing up is over, the tuberose takes the guepierre off, and it is naked, and is it is walking through its garden, and it is the Garden of Eden. And it is now transitioning, the metamorphosis is happening in connection to other flowers in particular. In this case, patchouli, black locust, more than anything else, um, and mimosa. Now, envision flowers on top of flowers. This is a tuberose that is starting to understand oh, I actually am a flower in my own right. I have a strength of my own. Um, I don't need to wear the haute couture dress to have power. I don't need to hide incognito with a trench coat and run through the city, um, hide my true identity because I don't want people to judge me. No. And also, 
this tuberose realizes, wait, I don't need to be like other people. I don't need to eat. I don't need to cover myself with certain things. I don't need a guépier to shape, to put myself into shape. I am a flower after all. But I have to understand who am I? So this is the type of tuberose in Eden that gets to know other flowers and other plants on its journey towards discovering itself. And it has to pass through that Garden of Eden in order to get to the other side, you see. So this is the fourth tuberose fragrance. It's a den. And the tuberose in here is very, very special. It's not easy to decipher and to find it. Uh, but um, interestingly enough, it's the tuberose that holds together all the elements of Eden. It, it kind of combines them all together. Together with the black locust, the tuberose makes all the other ingredients dance. But it doesn't know its power yet. It's just starting to realize that it actually is a flower and that it might have its own power. After the journey of Eden has passed, the tuberose realizes that it is a full-blown flower, right? And But interestingly for us, though, uh, we're not moving into the future, we're moving into the past, you guys. Um, and as the tuberose discovers its plant floral roots, it realizes that it is happy. You know, it starts becoming happy. It starts embracing itself for what it is. It doesn't judge itself. It doesn't let other people judge it, judge it either. It accepts itself for what it is. And it starts learning to love itself. And when it starts learning to love itself, slowly out of this garden, this darkness, whatever we had, the trench coat with the rain and the city, it's all passing. And now the sun is coming up. And it's a tuberose that is starting to really enjoy itself in the sun. You know, it's starting to go out without wearing anything. It's starting to be itself. And the first morning, after all of this night has passed, the first morning for the tuberose happens in 1922, when Ernest Beau decides to, together with Coco Chanel, release number 22. The tuberose in here, you guys. Now, I have number 22, the Eau de Toilette, the Pure Parfum, and the Eau de Parfum. But I am showing you here for the sake of this video the Eau de Parfum because the Eau de Toilette still has an incense tone which covers up more of the tuberose. The tuberose is much more prominent in the Eau de Parfum than it is in the other concentrations. And this is why I have learned to really love the Eau de Parfum. Uh, of number 22, Sunny. This is like the morning of a tuberose, okay? This is when the tuberose gets in touch with the neroli and they start chilling in the morning. They wake up together in the morning. This is tuberose's first grand morning when the tuberose woke up and for the first time ever, it's a full grown plant and it realizes, wow, life is amazing when you learn to love yourself for who you truly are. After that wonderful discovery from 1922, our tuberose grows into the day and starts conquering, you know, because it, it smells, it, it realizes, wow, when I'm not covered up by everything, all these clothes and everything, when I take all that off and I'm just me for who I am, that's actually when I am most loved and when I am my best self. So this type of tuberose now is going even further back in time. 1912. 1912 sees is the year in which Oubigan launches Quelques Fleurs. And this is a very complex perfume. Um, it is one of the first, if not the first, to define its own genre of floral, of a mixed bouquet of different flowers, many flowers. And the tuberose 
might just be only one of those flowers in this bouquet, but it is a V flower that invited all the other flowers to a party in the middle of the day and says, you know what, guys, we are flowers and we are amazing. We do not know gender. We do not know any restraints. We have smells. Our nature is to bring people joy, is to bring insects joy. We attract bees. We attract birds. We attract everything. All of nature loves flowers. Let's celebrate ourselves. And the tuberose organizes this incredible party of love, unity, and friendship called Quelque Fleur. Quelque Fleur launched in 1912. The nose behind it, I'm a bit difficult with the surname, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's Robert and then Benem or Bienami or Bienem or Benem. Sorry, Robert, for butchering your name. Despite me butchering your name, still, you've created a very elevated flower fragrance in which the tuberose is amazing. 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 This is when the tuberose literally says, Yeah, guys, party time. And everybody's naked at that party. Every flower realizes the beauty of their own self, the way that God created them. That's how they go to the party. And nobody's judging each other. They're all embracing and accepting each other for what they are. And every flower is different. Every flower has a different shape. Some are skinny, some are chubby, some are young, some are old. They don't judge. They love each other for their character, not for their uh, aesthetics. After <clears throat> that uh, party is um, is over, You know, we're going towards evening. Certain flowers start to mingle more with each other than other flowers do, if you know what I mean. And uh, the tuberose starts getting a little bit more aggressive, perhaps. A little bit more zesty and a little bit more determined. Because, But the tuberose doesn't realize it. What is going on? I mean, it's still daytime, but as the clock is ticking towards the darker hours and I'm just discovering my own identity and it's amazing to be me for who I truly am. Now that night is coming again, I feel something inside of me is waking up and I don't know what it is, but it's still not evening yet. It's early evening and I feel more aggressive and more in the mood. And that's where Giorgio kicks in. The tuberose in Giorgio, you guys. The Tuberose and Giorgio, Beverly Hills. This is the Made in USA version, formulation. This Tuberose decided to flirt with Gardenia. And Tuberose and Gardenia here, I mean, Giorgio Beverly Hills, you could check out the review of this one on my channel. It's one of the most complex, 1981 is the year this one was launched. You could imagine the 80s, shoulder pads high, life was all about consumption and enjoying life. Uh, and uh, Bob Aliano is the nose behind this one. This is when Tuberose and Gardenia, after they have flirted at the party, decide to jump in a cabriolet and drive off towards the sunset together with their white sunglasses. That's Giorgio. Now that we're driving towards the sunset, number eight. Sunset is falling. Sunset is happening. The night is falling. Night is coming. It's, 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 it's twilight. It's right in between. There's a fire that starts burning inside that tuberose. And it realizes it actually belongs to a group of other flowers that um, also bloom and come to their peak and climax at night. So as we're going towards the sunset, we're crystallizing the night blooming danger aspect of tuberose. 
and it is represented through three other through three flowers tuberose jasmine and ylang ylang and that my dears is alexander mcqueen's eau de parfum i prefer the eau de parfum to the pure perfume of this one because the tuberose is more prominent here um the pure perfume is more ylang ylang based uh this one is very soapy this one really really delivers the soapy aspect of tuberose and this one is composed completely around night blooming flowers and it's it, it hints it only hints at the narcotic uh note of tuberose it only hints because we're not there yet we're getting there and this is a tuberose that realized okay i am a night flower I want to see what happens when night falls. Let me hold hands with my other buddies who also want to go into the night, you know, the Ylang Ylang and the Jasmine, and let's see what happens in the darkest of nights. So Alexander McQueen's Alexander McQueen was released in 2016, but again, we're jumping back in time now because the ninth tuberose-based fragrance uh, is from 1948, and um, Germaine Cellier is the nose behind Robert Piguet's Fraca. Now, Fraca is a very famous tuberose-based fragrance. It is also a fingerprint magnet because it's a black glass bottle, but um, this is a femme fatale. This is a film noir. This is the Black Dahlia. I've reviewed this one on my channel as well. You could check out the review um, in the card section up here or in the description box down below. This tuberose knows that it can no longer hold its passion within, its desires. There's something pushing it from within to live through the night and to live in the night and, and, and enjoy the night fully for what it is. And it's a tuberose that is ready to jump over that precipice and it's almost ready, to, you know? It's like looking down at that void thinking, oh boy, that's dangerous. I do not know what's down there, but I really want to go in real bad. This is the narcotic aspect of tuberose. It's amazing. It's a very difficult perfume to enjoy. A lot of people do not like it. It's, it's a very conceptual fragrance. I love it to bits. And uh, it, it's that tuberose that is on the, it's on the verge of jumping down that void and just abandoning itself to that desire of the night. And as it jumps, it does decide to jump. As it jumps, we also jump from 1948 back to 2005. That danger, that jump, that abandoning yourself to your true nature and really being you, fully committed to yourself. You're thinking, oh my God, well, what? It, it, the two rows jumped. Is it dead now? It, no. It's when you abandon yourself, when you decide to let go of everything, when you really are free. You know, the Buddhists say that too. That's when you fly, you know. You just let go of everything and you realize, oh, you didn't lose anything. You actually gained everything. You gained everything. And that tuberose goes to 2005. Carnal flower, you guys, is number 10, which is number one. This is when tuberose soars. It flies and that night transforms into day. All the other flowers are in awe and look at it and they're applauding it because this one is soaring. It just, it flies. It's everywhere. It's all encompassing. This one brings me to tears sometimes. Need I say more? The camera cannot show. I got goosebumps all over my body right now. Um, 
especially because of this very theatrical representation that I gave you through storytelling, the goosebumps are there also because, you know, th this explains to, to you through these 10 perfumes, I explain my personal uh, journey through tuberose fragrances, like my understanding of it, learning to, because tuberose isn't easy, it's, it's easy to detect, you can smell it, but it's not easy to love. And you got to go through that whole cathartic process of change and evolution to realize where it's at with the tuberose. And carnal flower is the end of that journey, you guys. Like, you got to go through that whole journey to get here. And once you get there, you best believe Dominique Ropion for Frédéric Mal delivers with carnal flower. De frickin' livers. Now, these are my top 10 tuberose fragrances. Uh, you might be surprised because, you know, in perfumery, and listen, I know the niche. I know the mainstream. It's kind of symbolic that none of these 10, none of these 10 perfumes have the word tuberose in their title, in their name. None of them. And yet in niche perfumery and also mainstream perfumery, there are hundreds of perfumes with the name tuberose. Just, just you know, bombarded at you in the title of, of the actual perfume. Um, I went for the more subtle tuberoses. I went for the tuberoses that are there in plain sight, but they're hiding. I'm going for that type of tuberose that doesn't scream into your face, hey, I'm here, but you got to smell it out. So the name of the perfumes do not bear tuberose in the title. Because just like at the beginning of my story, when you're sleeping in that house, on the second floor in the open window at night from the garden, that smell of tuberose just, keep, you know, it slithers like a snake through the window into your nose and you just, it's there. It doesn't scream, but it, it lingers, narcotically lingers through the night until you wake up in the morning aroused. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me go to the chats quickly. It's a majestic flower, says David. Aisha says, beautiful flower. I thought it would be a dark flower. Wow. Richmond says, if only it were that easy. April Spritz says, I have cut tuberose in the, in the vase. The smell is divine, but the bloom doesn't last too long. No, it doesn't at all. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, oh my. Uh... I'll be ordering a, tuber a tuberose essential oil to replace my, my poppers then. <laughs> you should. MK says to David, I like the scent from the actual flower, but tuberose-based fragrances or candles give me the worst migraines, which are not appropriate for getting uh, to a climax. <clears throat> um... Mr. Philip Fabulous says, love poison. Yeah, poison is amazing. It reminds me of my mother. <clears throat> it's such a wonderful and powerful scent, says David. Miss Marie says, I got poison. Audrey to Richmond, vintage poison, exactly the one I received today. Well done, Audrey. I told you that we're, we were going to be talking uh, poison. Everything is holistic. Everything is connected, Audrey. I told you. Everything is connected. <laughs> Oh, oh, Debbie, thank you so much for becoming a member of the Fashion Bunker. Big heart to you. Thank you, Debs. Thank you so much. Um, Kira J says, 30 Avenue Hosh? Yes, that's the old address. That's how you know if it's a vintage, a true vintage. Um, Miss Marie says, 100 mils. Stephen says, the strongest juice in my collection is poison. It's beast. <laughs> David says, and I recently bought the poison, Extrait de Parfum. It's wonderful. It's actually more tuberose than anything else. Um, a mentholated minty tuberose. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, oh yes, a poponox and plum. Not much tuberose. <laughs> And Yem says, I am trying to catch up with you because English is not my mother language. I cannot understand some terms, but you are very clear in the way you present it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Yem. But also this video 
it will be posted later on so you could rewatch it and pause it and slow it down and i think captions will be also available maybe so you could kind of read the text in case i'm too fast with talking robert says david i want you to wear the sexiest tuberose when we meet haha -ha. and david answers i'll wear whatever you want poppy <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, when we're talking about tuberose, this type of conversation kind of fits. David says, how gorgeous. I love that apple bottle. Poison. Um, oh, I want that now, says Abby. Uh, Jack says, I wonder who's going to have to go through all my perfumes after I die. <laughs> Kira says, very nice. <laughs> MK says, Jacob, where is your poison, Le Merveilleux? I missed this bottle. Oh, it's in, it's in the archives. I have uh, several sizes of the, of the milk, of the poison milk. Um, Vanny says, the body cream jar is incredible. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's really, really, it's an art piece. Uh, Abby says, I adore body creams. I would go through that in a couple of weeks. And David says, that's luxury at its finest. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, their body. I mean, come on, you guys. This is amazing. Um, presentation is wonderful, says David. Mr. Philip Fabulous, why don't they make the bath powder anymore? Um, is that alleged talcum powder being hazardous? I have to make my own, but I would prefer to just buy it in a gorgeous, luxurious package. Yeah, because it's allegedly hazardous. So all of the brands discontinued, most of them discontinued it. To not have any issues. Audrey says, I need that poison soap in and case. I mean, I know, aren't they? I mean, come on. This is just the most beautiful thing ever. Look at this beauty. I mean, and the smell. Yes, MK says, soap bars used to be packaged like that at the time. David says, how wonderful. They need to bring those soaps back. Abby says, I have a red door uh, body powder. They use um, cornstarch now. Aisha says, oh, that soap and dish. How beautiful. Mr. Phil Fabulous says to Abby, yeah, I make my own uh, powder. That is so cool. Secret poison. Now that could be an interesting scent. Hmm. Oh, Fede says, I have to go. Sorry, have fun. Have fun. Thank you, Fede, for joining the live stream. David says, I still need to smell Eden. You should. It's amazing. Jack says, my baby Eden. Oh, baby. Yeah, guys. I forgot. We got a big bottle here. It's the Factice of Eden as well. This is my, the love of my life. I love her so much. Love Eden so much. Um, David says, I thought her sister Lulu would be the one to be showcased. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Miss Marie says, Jacob, you play with my best perfumes. Yay. Anya says, loving the story behind the choices. Thank you so much, Anya. Audrey says, I sprayed a den on my mom the other day. It was years since she last smelt it. She adored it. My sister and I will buy it for her, mother's, uh, for, her for Mother's Day as a surprise treat. That's so sweet of you guys. I fell in, Mr. Phillips says, I fell in love with your description every time. Oh, it's poetry. Thank you so much, Mr. Philip Fabulous. Thank you. Audrey says, number 22 just gives and gives and gives. Audrey, you are so right. The most giving of all Chanel perfumes is number 22. Olfactive stories, welcome to the video, to the chat, sweetie. Hi, guys, I'm late tonight. I put my kid to bed and come back as soon as possible. Welcome back, sweetie. Oh, uh, Debbie says flower orgy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Quelques fleurs. Mm. Alexandre Trevisani Meletti. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Welcome to the chat. Hi from Brazil. Hello, sweetie. Niem says great sharing, Jacob. Thank you so much, Niem. Miss Marie says am in love with Jacob's reviews. Thank you, Miss Marie. Thank you so much. Uh... I don't know. Oh, Alexander says, I'm a lover of, of perfumes, I guess. Uh, Miss Marie says, nice idea, naked, innocent flowers. Yes, flowers are naked and innocent, you know? And that's the nature of, of things. That's how it should be. Perfume and music, says Miss Marie. Rich Mitch to Audrey Jane says, they have one soap left with dish 
for fifth oh wow that's expensive for the, for the soap but soap with dish is really cool though the poison one not bad um kingdom by alexander mcqueen was magical my sister's favorite yeah kingdom was a special one and the bottle was gorgeous too Nim says, uh, great sharing. Thank you so much. Audrey says, fraca is one I would love to try. Have you tried carnal flower? Asks Rich Mitch. Of course, Rich did. Nim says, amazing. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, narcotic. It's the word I was looking for. David says, I usually get a laundry cream smell from tuberose. Have you tried Hermes Twilly Decob? Yes. Wesley Duncan, welcome to the chat, sweetie. Do you like Joy by Jean Patou? Uh... Yes, stay tuned though, <laughs> because that, yeah, not, I mean, not today, but uh, there's more to be said about joy. Um, Miss Marie says, Jacob, you are reading my mind. Would you invite me to, to your show, Miss Marie says? <laughs> if I ever had a show, like, you know, for real, real, yeah, that would be amazing. I can't believe how Jacob makes perfume reviews so magical. Thank you so much. Thank you. Melly says, having trouble with chat again, but I'm here. Chat is lagging very much. Can't see many comments. Oh, I'm sorry, Melly. Audrey says, Melly, I can you can you see now? Oh, good, you can see. Okay. I love your pics on Instagram, says Miss Marie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh Merengue9791 says, anyone tried Laboratorio Fattivo Tuberosis? I have not. Oh, Relief, Audrey, thank you for reaching out to me, says Melly. Jacob and Chanel Privé, says Miss Marie. Oh, Miss Marie says, I'm Jacob's fan. Thank you so much, Miss Marie. So sweet of you. Asian Delight, hello. Hello, Simi, my dear. How are you? Welcome. Welcome to the chat, sweetie. Hello, dearest Jacob. Hello, dearest Simi. Fatima says, Eden and hearts. Exquisite reviews about arts. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, the chat just, the chat just disappeared. Hold on, you guys. Silky says, poison love for life. Candy Fluff says, love how you make us feel the perfumes they come. Great reviews. Thank you so much, Candy Fluff. Uh, Wesley Duncan, do you like any Juicy Couture favorites? Um, no, well, Juicy Couture, no, I haven't really delved so much into them. Uh, Audrey says, Jacob, does your poison soap fill the room like your Chanel cocoa soap? I never want to use them, but enjoy them when opening my cl closets. Audrey, truth be told, you know, because I prepared these live streams meticulously. So uh, these little babies were here since yesterday. Just the, the lineup of the, um, of the 10 perfumes. And even though this one was closed, it, the room still smells completely. If this one were open... It would, it would, it's insane. It would, it's closed and still the whole room smells of the poison soap. So yes, this thing fills a room even after like 30 years. Cause this one is like 30 years old. It's insane. And it's amazing. Uh, Asian Delight says, Juicy Couture Gold is gorgeous. Miss Marie says, you make me want to smell perfumes all day. <laughs> Miss Marie says, Dune? Oh, I like Dune. I have a vintage Joy perfume, says Melly. Uh, Asian Delight says, Jacob, did you buy Joy? I'll uh, have to talk to you in private, darling, <laughs> about that. <laughs> I wore Dune today, so gorgeous. Yeah, Dune is amazing. I also love Dune for men, by the way, you guys. Susan Bailey, hello, sweetie. Welcome to the chat. Hey, Jacob, hope you are well. Yes, I'm doing good. Thank you. David says, loved it. I hope you're doing well, too. David says, loved the tuberose story. Wonderful journey and imagery. Thank you so much. Um, Fatima says, what do you think about the old uh, love, Chloe? Uh, they discontinued. Why? I, d I don't know why they discontinued it. You prefer your Poison de Toilette to the Esprit de Parfum? Yes. I do. I prefer the old de toilette to the Esprit de Parfum. Yeah. My closet smells of poison, says Melly. Mm, that's delicious. David says, 
uh, okay, wearing YSL cinema and was reminded of see me. That's so cute. <laughs> Jack says, I wish I could see perfumes with as much depth as you. Of course you can, Jack. I mean, remember your review of Eden. It's amazing. Um, thanks for your help as always. Oh, okay. Well, guys, we, we went, we went, we went through the entire chats. Thank you so much. I'm holding the, the, this is just such a tactile bottle. I love it so much. But anyway, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you everybody so much for tuning in, for chatting, co-chatting with me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do consider subscribing to my channel and uh, pushing the join button next to the subscription button to become a member today and get access to special extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deck of All Spelled Together there as well. Scrolling here on the sidebar are my, basically the producers of the show, you guys, the patrons and the members. You guys help the Fashion Bunker live. So to honor you and to thank you, your names are now always listed at the end of every video, just like a beautiful credits closing a movie, an emotional movie. This was a roller coaster ride, you guys, because we had, we this was a journey. This is a whole movie, a YouTube video that actually portrayed a whole movie through words and then after that the critiques reviewed the movie together that's basically what this video was all about but everything in perfume form and i do wish we had odorama so that we could all smell it through the screen that would be the best thing ever but you know the future is going to bring many things and i'm sure that's going to be one of the things the future does bring um if they can synthesize all ingredients all natural ingredients and make them digital or synthetic they can also make them digital and if they can make them digital i'm sure there's there's ways it's already in the works. I'm sure it's already in the works and I'm sure it's already possible on some level to do it. So it's just a matter of time before we're going to be able to review perfumes and just push a button on your screen and the screen emanates a smell and then you get to smell it together with me. Wouldn't that be something? Anyway, you guys, uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Deco All Spelled Together. You can also follow me on my Chanel dedicated Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, dedicated to Coco Chanel, uh, to my a private collection of Chanel as well as everything the brand is going through and up to these days. You can also follow me on Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to Coco Chanel the woman and her life. So, after having seen, after having planned this um, video for many, many, many months, I feel so good that I have managed to deliver it to you on St. Valentine's Day or St. Valentine's Weekend. Uh, because I think there's no better time for tuberose than on St. Valentine's Day because it's a journey of discovery. It's about discovering yourself. It's about discovering who you love. The person who you love might be yourself, might be somebody else. But as they say, you got to love yourself first before you can even know how to love anybody else. And I guess perfumes also teach us a lot uh, about one important thing which is to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.